Hello, Coach Steve Clark here. Today, we are interviewing you because you are our longest serving coach in the history of sports outreach, which is incredible. We will discuss how you got started with sports outreach and how it brought you to this point today. So let's begin. So the first question is, tell us how you got connected with Sports Outreach's founder, Russ Carr, and if you can remember, what year was that? Uh, well, I, I got connected with Russ Carr in, in the uh, late 60s when, when he was my soccer coach at Westmont College. And that's how I got connected with him. And then uh, he started going or he, he started doing sports ministry and he kept on inviting me to come and join him in Uganda. It took me a few years to, to respond to that invitation. But in 1995, uh, I responded and, and my son and I, my oldest son and I went to U Uganda, Kenya and uh, Rwanda. And that was right after the genocide. Mm -hmm. So that was my first exposure to sports outreach and sports ministry. Wow, that's awesome. So at that point, or maybe it was after your trip, what caused you, or when did you become a, a coach with sports outreach? What did that look like? Well, what happened is uh, uh, two years after 95, I, I got a letter from Rwanda in French. Oh, wow. Yeah. And I had gone to a men's retreat and uh, Russ had asked me to go again. And I was praying about that. And I, when I got home from the retreat, I said, Lord, show me if you want me to go. And uh, I got the letter from Rwanda. And that was kind of like, uh, you know, the, the fleece. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was like the fleece. And so I decided to go again. And that began something that uh, continued for the next 25 plus years. Wow. So what was it about that trip in Africa or, you know, engaging with those different countries, those people that kind of like connected you to be able to, you know, it ignited that in you to be able to continue that wanting to go, wanting to serve in that way? Well, um, I was on a basketball court coaching some young men in basketball, and, and they were passing, and I said, you guys are passing sloppy. And they said, explain sloppy to me. And so I, I tried to explain sloppy to them, but then I said, you know, we, we can be sloppy in life, can't we? Mm -hmm. And then compare that to being a sloppy Christian. And that was the connection between sports and ministry, teachable moments, mm. teachable moments. And, and I was just ecstatic that I made that connection or God made that connection for me. So that, yeah. that, my, so that was the beginning really of everything just moving forward. And, and uh, so I went that year and then the next year, I believe it was the next year that uh, Don Brenneman and I as groups. So we, we, we began leading groups um, to the to the countries in East Africa that we were serving in Rwanda, Kenya, and and uh, Uganda. Wow. And that's kind of where I met Robert too. And I think wow. on that third trip. He was a young man and I remember coming out of the, the hostel we were staying in Rwanda and these young men were washing the vehicle, getting it ready for our day's journey because things get real dirty mm -hmm. real quick there. Yeah. And uh, these guys were just, you know, serving. So it was, it was just neat. That's amazing. So from that point on, were you taking like year, like annual trips or was it like? No, I was, ta I was taking annual trips during okay. my, I, I was a teacher. And I was taking annual trips during the summer. Wow. And we were we were we were doing everything. We would organize, you know, the trip. We would have to take care of the trip arrangements and everything. Everything. 
mm-hmm. that you do. And, and Russ had said, you can only take two trips a year. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So, so, so that started. Uh, and then after, and then Russ asked me to go to Mexico. So I went down, uh, I went, I went a week before I took a group that sports outreach had organized or, or got volunteers to come on. I went down and followed Tim around for a, for a week just to see what he did, which was a fascinating experience because he would go someplace and something that would maybe take 25, 30 minutes to do would take a couple hours because you met people along the way. And in Mexico, in a lot of countries, it's more about relationship than it's about time. Yeah. And so things would take a lot longer than you would think to do those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. So that was Mexico. And then, um, so I'd go to Mexico or I'd go to Africa, depending on the needs of sports outreach and what they wanted me to do. So that was always fun and different kinds of ministry. Uh, In Mexico, we would do uh, swimming lessons wow because the kids because the kids there um live near a river and they also mm-hmm. you know a lot of kids drown because of those kinds of things they go out in the river but they didn't really know how to swim well so that's what tim wanted to do so we do swimming and then we do soccer and basketball uh, at another point in, in time and also do a, a, a uh, help out with recreation with the uh the summer program of the church. That's awesome. So, wow, that's a lot of years and a lot of trips in different countries. <laughs> yeah. every, every summer, pretty much, I would use part of my summer to go on a trip, organize the trip and go on the trip. That's amazing. Idea. I mean, <laughs> it's too many. <clears throat> I think I've been to Africa at least 12, 14 times. Um, Mexico, probably three times, uh, El Salvador, two or three times, and now uh, Dominican. So I'd been to most of the places that we had served mm-hmm. until we started really expanding. Yeah. <laughs> Before I can't do any more traveling to the places yeah. as I've been mm-hmm. and to the ministries and the relationships that I developed there in different places. Wow. So many trips, Steve. That's amazing. I, I have no idea. I mean, <laughs> it's too many. <clears throat> I think I've been to Africa at least 12, 14 times. Um, Mexico, probably three times. Uh, El Salvador, two or three times. And now uh, Dominican. So I'd been to most of the places that we had served. Mm-hmm. Until we started it, really expanding. Yeah. <laughs> And then I, I've also done <clears throat> Global School of Sports Ministry every year for I don't know how many years now. And uh, that's been a blessing. Moan is, is, a, is a joy to watch him grow and his mm-hmm. ministry just increase. Mm-hmm. So my, <clears throat> my thought for him is slow down and develop leaders. Yeah. That's key. That's really good. That's a good segue to the next question of, can you share some thoughts and the importance of mentorship? Why is that so important? Why is it important to make leaders? <clears throat> my, my philosophy has always been trying to try to have someone go with you mm-hmm. to take your place, whether I'm working at church ministry, which I did, um, you know, doing different roles within the church ministry. <clears throat> and then when I was coaching, I always wanted to have someone uh, next to me that could take over if I left or that kind of thing. And so it's always important, you know, to to work at having someone walk alongside of you. Yeah. And so that that's always been my philosophy, no matter whether I'm working at church or coaching for school or those kinds of things. And my coaching experience was pretty much in the in the middle school level. Yeah. Or coaching my kids through up to junior high level. 
or middle school level, past, past that. Didn't get into the high school vein, although I was invited to do that at one point. Awesome. What would you say brings you the most satisfaction while coaching? Um, having kids enjoy the sport and learning that, that sport is something that's, that's very enjoyable to do. You don't have to be the best person in the world. And I, I, I taught at a small country school, and uh, so I coach kids at, <clears throat> in the middle school, and I coach multiple sports. If, if there was a sport that had to be done, I would be doing it. So I, I coached uh, basketball, uh, cross country, track, and uh, girls volleyball. Mm -hmm. uh, throughout my career doing, doing that at least at the school level middle school level and then I did community sports too and I did uh, Little League when my sons were in Little League so uh, Little League and soccer I coached for the community so if it, it had to be done I'd be one of the first to volunteer so what would you say is your favorite sport to coach I I'd say basketball because I ended up doing that more than than any of the others. Others and, and just a love of basketball. I mean, I I played uh, up the junior high level. I mean, uh, the junior varsity level in basketball in high school. I played one year of college basketball, um, and then I discovered soccer, and, and at Westmont. We were again, a bunch of people from different sports, but never played soccer. And we, we played for Russ. We did very well. We went to three national tournaments in the years I played. Um, and, and it was just it was just a blast. And uh, a lot of running. I'd lose about 10 pounds, and I couldn't lose <laughs> 10 pounds at that point. And uh, I'd lose about 10 pounds a game. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh man so what would you say was your favorite sport to play or is your favorite sport to play well I, I'd go you know actually what I do now is I'd say volleyball wow okay <laughs> uh, I just love the spike and block I love volleyball so I would probably choose volleyball as well less running <laughs> A little bit less. I mean, you still run around, but no, you still you, you get the exercise, but right, it's just exciting. It's, it's exciting sport. Yeah. What would you say has caused you to stay engaged with sports outreach even until this point? Well, I, I see the power of sports in ministry. Mm. You know, it, it breaks down breaks down barriers and gives opportunities not only for teachable moments, but just uh, opportunities to share the gospel to love on kids, give them an opportunity to have, have a time uh, outside maybe of the cares of the world that, that confronts them and uh, just gives time for community and, and just enjoying sport. Yeah. That's so good. That, that was great. <laughs> so, well, I, and, and, and I'll tell you, um, until Dano came, I was really thinking of, well, I think my time's up. It, it, it was God bringing Dano into my life and uh, seeing that there, there's still room for vision, room, room yeah. for opportunities to